Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Ah, this is it, folks. It's Tuesday. You're a Tuesday. And it's time to play podcast. Ah. I it felt like, there. well, I paused because I think there's going to be like music. It felt like. Do you By the know way. That? Oh, go ahead. That song, that Jeopardy was invented by Merv Griffin, and he wrote that song. Yes, and it's uh, exactly 30 seconds long. I think I think we've had this exact dialogue ah, on the show. But I might shit. be wrong, and for some reason everyone's upset. I'm just trying to protect you guys from hearing the same fucking you know, shit twice. Yes. You mean well. I, I mean very well, and uh, boy, that, that's always, that means you did something bad when someone's like, well, you mean well. Yeah, I get but I don't think you did anything bad. I just think, yeah, you literally meant you're trying to help. I'm just trying to help, and uh, a lot of people, you know, think I stink, but that's all right. You know, hey. my asshole smells. Same. My shit stinks. I'll admit it. I had a uh, a real... You ever have this where you, you have the diarrhea feel? Like you have that lower abdomen, like... Blur, oh, and yeah. then you shit, and it's just like a regular shit. Ah, I'm, I'm sure I've had that. It doesn't, doesn't ring at anal. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't ring a smell, but I'm sure I, I've had it. I had one of those jog to the toilet, stomach hurts, here it comes, this is going to be a mess, and it was just like bloop, a nice missile and I, I was like oh all right you, you fooled me you fooled me jerry <laughs> nothing better than the missile just a <laughs> then you wipe there's nothing on the paper it's like man my asshole and shit worked perfectly together on that and and killed it yeah i always think it's like a balloon animal when they do the <laughs> ah, that's what yes. it feels like it kind of comes out it's like a nice balloon animal shit right somebody had a who was some lady had a great bit about how every time she takes a big big brown turd she thinks oh so I could take one. In oh, like ass. a dick in the ass. Yeah, yeah but I think uh, I got to question your police work there, because it's it's meant to shoot out. The whole system is sliding out. You're going against the grain. Not, I, I mean see. that offensively. I don't know if that's coming off bad, but well, you're, you're it, talking about brown and policing. It's but, uh, you know it's slipping out. But again, it's if you go the other way, it's like one of those. Um, remember when? Uh, no, that doesn't make sense. But. Fuck the analogy. Do you remember those cars where it was like a zip? You pulled it and it went. Zoo. Yes. It was like a zip line, but that's different than a zip line. But you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. It had teeth on it and it kind of. Yeah. And then it, it charged it up. Yeah. The teeth. I was thinking the teeth, but it's a bad analogy because you did put that back in and pull it out. True. True. Yeah. But you know, you ever put your finger in a, in a, in a, yes. like a ketchup or something. And then you try to pull the finger out. And it hurts. You're like, ah, but it could go in so easy. It's like a Venus uh, fly trap. No, what's the what are the finger traps? Japanese finger trap. Japanese or, or Chinese? Is it Chinese? I confuse every race that's not mine. Yeah, Wuhan, uh, Hong Kong. I don't know. I just watched the Bruce Lee doc. He's Chinese. Yeah, I didn't care for it. I thought it was boring as as my ass. Eh, I mean, he did a lot. I mean, it, the guy was uh, pretty impressive, but yeah, maybe it wasn't that exciting. Well, he's good. I only watched about 10 minutes. I was at a friend's house. It was Sarah and I and a buddy, and I was like, oh, the fucking put on moves like water, because I like the name. Yes. It seems like something. And then we put it on, and like within 30 seconds, they both dozed, and it just felt like there was like stock footage of like Hong Kong, and it was like one of those like, and just weird black and white footage and the chatting. I was like, this stinks. Yeah, yeah, it picks up. You know, he's the Green Hornet. He's Asian. He's fighting. It picks up a little, but uh, it did drag. For a, vi a movie about a guy who's quicker than water and, and fast on his feet, uh, it was a little slow. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't watch the whole thing, so maybe, I don't know, someone might be upset with me, but uh, I couldn't get through it. Everyone, But don't you hate when you recommend something and everyone starts dropping like flies? Everyone falls asleep? You take it personal. Oh, the worst, the worst. 
Uh, or what if you you go, hey, we all got to eat here. Then we all eat there, and the food's soggy, and the waitress is a cunt. Brutal. It's the worst. I just had it happen. We tried to watch Mank. Have you watched Mank? Uh, I, I, I had the lady with me. We got through 11 seconds, and she started fingering herself with a candlestick. <laughs> we, um, Out of boredom. We um, Horrible clue game, by the way. We uh, started watching. It was me and Sarah and her mother, and I was like, let's watch this. I don't know. You were born in the 40s. It's from the 40s or whatever, and then her mother was there, too. And so we put on Mank, and it wasn't even a fall asleep. It was like a go to sleep. You oh. know when they're like, get the blanket and put the knees up like this? Yeah. And they get a blanket, and I'm like, well, that's not even, you're not even falling asleep. You're literally deciding to go to bed. Yeah. What is it? Because first of all, it's black and white. It's set in 1908 or whatever the hell. And it's just so slow with the dialogue, and you don't care about anybody. I, I, I couldn't get the lady to get two seconds into that. I liked some of it. I mean, it was fun. I like old men. He's an old. He's an old man. Isn't that funny? Old he is old, old man. He used to not be, but now he is. Yeah, that's life. But I, I was interested. We got about halfway through, and I felt like I had to say, "Hey, we can change it." But you do feel the hatred. Yes. I'm like, everybody hates me. I'm a piece of shit. And I'm like, I just, I, I never saw it. I haven't seen it. I don't know. But yeah, and I feel like now, especially with the pandemic, all the recommendations are flying in. So you got to be on with your wrecks now because some people wreck shit. I'm like, well, since he wrecked it, no thank you. Right. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of that. I got a couple of people that 90% of the wrecks are shit. Yeah, 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 it happens. I'll tell you what, though. I watched the Bruce Lee doc on a flight to Texas, and I forgot my headphones. So you're like, all right, I guess I got to watch a movie. So that's why I watched it. That's how I got through it because, A, I was on a plane, and, B, I couldn't listen to my phone. Uh, yeah, that's tough. But it does feel nice to sit back and watch a flick, doesn't it? That's I mean, true. Uh, uh, podcast is good. Music's cool. But just throwing it up there, the flick ends, and you're halfway there. It's a nice feeling. By the way, I think we were like... Uh, strangers in my wife, or what, what's that called? Ships in ships the, in the ne- Ships in the night, yeah. Yes. Ship, what is it? Is it ships clits, in the night? Clits in the night, something like that. But yeah, you're right. It's ships in the night. Yeah, I think ships in the night. But you, you I was in Texas. I'm going to talk about Texas. Now you're in Texas. We just missed each other. I'm going to tell all these Texas stories while you're in Texas. It's really oh yeah. Well, I got nothing, Texas. nothing about Texas. So you fill the Texas gap, and I got other shit. Ooh, the Texas gap. Good uh, porn. Uh, be a porn? Is gap a word for pussy? I feel like it is, but it, maybe it's I, not. I don't think gash and then G spot. I don't know about gap, though. Gap isn't bad. Why not gap? There's a yeah, thigh gap. gap. There's thigh gap, but a gap. I mean, there's a hole, a gape, gaping hole. Oh, yeah. Great, then Amer- great American pussy. <laughs> then there's wap and fap. What's fap? That's the, they, that's what you call jerking it, fap, because it sounds like fap, 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 fap. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Uh, wait, what was Oh, I was at, speaking of Texas, I was in Texas with Sarah and her family, and we were at a party, and her nieces were there, and somebody said, you know, there's not that many words for vagina. There's not as many words. What? And I was like, I said, what are you kidding? And then I started to list them, but she's got an 11-year-old niece and a ah. 12-year-old niece. But yeah. I'm like, you know, cunt, twat, squish, vag, vajayj, vagina, vajg, pussy, <laughs> snatch, you know. gash, hatchet wound, honey pot, uh, moose knuckle, uh, yeah. camel toe, man in the boat, cunt again, right, coos, <sighs> uh, clam, clam's nice, pink, cooter, coochie. <laughs> Two in the pink, one in the stink. I know yeah. everyone's yelling at their radio right now. Uh, I know. <laughs> twat? Did we do twat? Yeah, I said twat. Um, Cock gobbler. Gap is a new one. Yeah. Hole. Hole. Yeah, so anyways, that's got to be 20 we just named right yeah, off the top of my tits. And then you get all weird. Like, you can do dick, and it's like purple-headed yogurt slinger, all this shit, where you're like, <laughs> all right, all right, how many of these are we doing? <laughs> I like a one word or two word. Yeah, there's a bunch, but uh, a- a- anywho, it was uh, it's one of those weird moments where you're like, you want to fight for something, but then you're like, it's inappropriate. But I came really close, and yeah. it just looks creepy because you forget you're an uncle to like your in-law. Like uh, to me, I'm an uncle to my 
sister's kids right but then you forget like your your wife has a niece and nephew so i'm like their uncle which is weird because oh. i feel no connection to them but i wanted oh, yeah. to tell them all the words for pussies but yeah that is weird you're their uncle too and you don't even know them you don't even have any blood no i don't care if they die it's it's a weird feeling who, who needs them <laughs> but uh but anyways what do you think of this i touched on this in the Patreon. So the real fans are got a, a heads up on this one. So you know me. I was down in Austin. Uh, no luck on the Rogan. He was overbooked. Everyone, people were tweeting at him. And by the way, don't people are like tweeting at him be like, hey, you piece of shit. Have ah. a list on it. It, it. it reflects bad on me. Leave the man alone. Yeah, it doesn't look good. He's like, oh, he equates you with annoying. I, I know. So, so. I appreciate you trying to help, but my God, people are like, yeah, you fat-headed piece of shit. You got a small dick if you don't have list on. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll do it another time anyways. But so I went down there and you know me, I love Austin and uh, I'm a basic bitch. I really love South Congress there. I love Magnolia. Sure. As you know, I love the queso. I love the shopping. I like the boots. I like to pick up the boots and say, this one's four grand. I, I keep still going. There. <laughs> What's not and, the love? It's a lot of fun. They got the kitschy stuff. There's little Mexican dolls with the skeleton face, which is fun. Can I ask this? Are you into Day of the Dead face paint? Because that's like my thing, I think. That is your thing? I'm way into it. I want to fuck a girl with a skull face and that weird, the big white eyes and the black. I've Googled. I'm not a big porn guy, but I've looked up Dawn of the Dead or Day of the Dead or whatever the fuck porn. I've, I've, I've like it it looks cool i can respect that hey that's a fun looking face a uh, black face there but uh I, i'm not into it i don't find it a turn on i think anything is a turn on to me at this point mm, you know you yeah, get wow, older that's not and, good and you're just i mean within reason i don't uh, want to see you know a, a rabbit fist a, a quadriplegic or something but uh, i would but i'm just saying you're an uncle now so you got to be careful yeah, you know, within within the law, within the rules, not anything. I mean, most things uh-huh. are not attractive to me, I guess. But I guess the point is Dawn of the Dead or Day of the Dead. By the way, evidently the most controversial thing I've ever said on this podcast is that a foot fetish comes from exploring all other options. You get down to feet. <laughs> I mean, I got 300 emails being like, I've been into feet since I was six, you piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, I got a couple of those too. I, I don't get it, but boy, people are passionate about that hoof. Yeah, I mean, I like a, I like a foot. I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not one to shame, but uh, I'm not jerking off to a. Could you jerk off to a foot? I can jerk off on one or sniff one, maybe. But no, jerking off to a foot. There's so many other parts. Give me a twat, a clam, a bush, a beaver, beaver. Oh yeah, those are or, all pretty similar parts you just named, though. I have to say. Well, tits, butt, back, waist, thighs. I like a clavicle, I like a shoulder, I like a neck, I like a nip, a stomach. A nip, a slope, a... Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> uh, sorry, wrong wrong category, but... Um, Is that Carlin? What's that? Oh, he does a whole thing where he lists all the racial slurs, and that was that was in there. Oh, that's fun. No, you could you could do that. He's got a street named after him. Isn't that crazy? I love it. So cool. And I also love how like these super woke people like adopted Carlin. Like he's our guy. I'm like, are you kidding? He said feminists are cum catchers. Yeah, he called Eddie Murphy and uh, Richard yeah. Pryor the <laughs> N word, and yeah, that's he's a whole great. other situation. But so I apologize to the foot fetishists out there. I, it was just a, a shot in the dark. I'm not a scientist over here. What am I? In a fucking Dr. Ruth over here? I don't know what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> it, it, it's always uh, weird. But anyways, I, uh, last week was a much more controversial episode than I thought. People were mad about the chili peppers. People were mad about the homeless guys that were aggressive to me in Ecuador, the foot fetish oh, yeah. thing. I mean, I, really, I was like I was Alex Jones last week. <laughs> well, we could use the numbers, God damn it. But yeah, we say crazier shit than him. What the hell? But I think we're obviously joking, and he's not. Right. I think that's uh, the thing. And anyways, that guy stinks. But I, I went to South Congress, went shopping, and it was me and Sarah and her sister. And how do you feel about this? I threw down a challenge because you know we're all here to shop. We're all getting out of pandemic. We're all traumatized. The whole thing. And I said, I stopped the ladies. I grabbed them each by the tit, and I said. Let's spend $1,000 on South Congress Avenue. Uh, what do you say? Come on, you, the three of us, we go crazy. We're pumping money into the economy. We're all uh, sad. You don't you, like it? 
You're going nuts, man. You you got a real money fetish. That's your fetish. But I haven't left the house. I haven't spent any money. I've been home this whole time. You I haven't been out. A, you bought a nine hundred dollar paperback. Well, I haven't got to that yet. That's only the patrons. That oh. was my contribution oh. to the thousand, the thousand bucks. Oh, okay. I but, get it. So that was all in the same trip. But I've been sitting here on my fucking asshole. I mean, we've been, you know, we went to Shelter Island. <laughs> we went to Maine. We went to Seattle. We went to Marfa. We went quite a few places. But this whole year, we haven't been buying plane tickets. I haven't been eating out. I haven't, you know, fucked my dad in a while. So I haven't been buying too much. And I don't buy clothes. I'm wearing, you know, free Comedy Works shirt. I, 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 you know, I don't buy a lot of stuff. You got yeah. fucking nine apartments. You live in Manhattan. <laughs> You got a car, another car, a bike. I, <laughs> I mean, you got payments. I got nothing. We, we got I, a sweet deal on an apartment. I, I, I got my, my fucking used car. That was the previous most controversial thing I ever did. <laughs> and so, <laughs> the Sentra. But you bought $700 for, of, of New Balance twice. Well, that was an accident, but I'm using it. In fact, I just remember I got a shitty pair. They're all beat up, and I'm, I got a full, fresh pair. So that's not too kooky. So I went there and and we were gonna spend some money. We're going shopping. I said, "Fuck it, let's just try to spend a thousand bucks." By the way, they were not enthusiastic. They were like, "All right, yeah, whatever you." Fuck. Uh, <laughs> Those but, Tolamashes, they're not uh, they're not the rowdiest. No, they don't get too rowdy. But as I talked about on the Patreon, you alluded to it. I bought a first edition Lyndon Johnson's book signed by LBJ. I mean, he's dead. R.I.P. LBJ. Yeah, that's true. Holy hell. But uh, signed is big. He's a president. But you're turning into like a dad now. You're, you're becoming the war guy, like a buff, a, a history buff. <laughs> that's fun. I want to be a buff. Eh, yeah, Biff wants to be a buff. <laughs> but I bought that. So that was my contribution. I bought that, and I bought a nice South Congress Austin, the Bats poster. It's like a pink lithograph. I don't know what that means. Yeah. And I bought a nice gift for somebody else. And then Sarah bought a pair of, uh, what do you call it? The old shit, a pair of pants that's old. Panties. Vintage. Vintage. She got some vintage pants, which are not uh, cheap, by the way. You'd think they would be cheap. No, these guys are crooks. They go to thrift stores. They yank these uh, pants off the shelf. They throw a $700 price tag on that puppy and put it in the front window. Well, that's what she did, and then uh, we bought some soaps, and then her sister bought some blue block, some sunglasses, and a book herself. We we got pretty close, I have to say, but we didn't we didn't get to the thousand dollar mark. But isn't that service? Aren't we heroes for going to a city in a pandemic and spending some money, throwing the cash around? Yeah, I guess that's one way to look at it. I remember when uh, some bad shit happened with the with the recession. Obama was like, "Go out there, go to the mall, go to the dinner, go to the uh, the whorehouse, whatever it is, and spend." Yeah, same after 9-11. That's kind of our answer to everything. 9-11 yeah. is the same thing. Bush came out and he said, don't worry about me. I'm going to bomb a few thousand people and you guys go to the mall. And uh, everyone did it. Everyone played their part. Yeah, and, and you get a little, you get some socks and an iPad and a, and a pocket protector. So it's it's fun for everybody. Yeah, well, I guess, uh, I don't know. I'll be I'll be careful moving forward, but it was exciting, and I do feel, everyone keeps saying it, it's going to be like the Roaring Twenties. We're coming out of it. Everyone I know is vaccinated. I got a heart on, and it, it's going to be time. But as I texted you, we forgot all the shitty things that are going to come back. Right, right. The fucking traffic, the long lines. Uh, you're right. I went at the airport for half an hour getting through that fucking mouse maze they call a security line it's brutal i went to starbucks the other day there's 48 people in there Every, there's, it's filled and then uh, yeah the airport the security line was long and we forgot all these things because we were like oh i haven't seen family i haven't been right. to the movies i miss my steam room i miss you know blowing guys and dumpsters but sure. there's gonna be traffic parking's gonna suck yes. the people that can't get their suitcase out of the fucking thing Right. All that shit is coming back. Ah. Brutal. You know, it'd be nice if we racked up some miles. They should give you more miles if you travel during a pandemic. It should be double the miles. Yeah. Well, some might have the exact opposite thought. Ah, good point. Good point. <laughs> what can you do? Somebody said to me, the other, I think it was Jay Nog, who's a twos gay. Ah. He's, he said, well, he he read, but he was my source, that We'll actually have an, a harder time readjusting to what was normal, readjusting, than we did to adjusting to pandemic. 
Wow. He's got – I think we'll do it, but I think you're right. It's going to be – it's almost like building the muscles back. It's going to take some time because adjusting to a pandemic, you lose things. You, you don't go to work. You don't go to comedy shows. You don't go to the movies. So it was easier to just sit back. Now we're going back to the office, back to the movies, back to the traffic. You're right. It's going to be hard. I've already had the moment where my agent called, and he's like, I got this date, and I'm like, fuck, the week before I'm in Des Moines, then I'm in Kansas City, I'll have to come back for three, and it gave me like an anxiety attack looking at it, like, we're gonna be, I, you've been working for a little bit now, but I'm like, I, I'm not ready to go back to gone three days, home four days, gone oh, two yeah. days, it's, it's, uh, it's scary, I, I, I like being home, I like to feel nestled. Yes, nestled's good, Nestle Crunch. Well, speaking of going out, I did a did a gig. I got to start saying no. I really do. I say that every two weeks. But uh, you remember we were at the cellar. It was me, you, Andy Haynes, Ron, on uh, Veter, Rosebud. We're all hanging out. It was a great, great hang. And I go, I got to go to Jersey. Yeah. And everybody's like, "What are you crazy? You're here at the club. Do a set." I'm like, "I got to go. I got to go to Long Island. Not the Long Island. What is it? A uh, Penn Station and go to Jersey like a psycho." Yeah, it was rough because we we lost you, but we had that was like amazing to me. I wanted to just jerk off all over the the chalk because it was so exciting. Because people kept coming in one at a time. You yeah. came in, then Vader came in, and it was like heroic. Griffin and uh, yeah, it was awesome. But yeah, you went to Jersey, no good. Well, it was uh, one of these. Uh, hey, we sold out a show, and we were like, let's add another one. We had another show, and that was the mistake. Because here's my thing about the road gigs: these Jersey out of town gigs is. There's no way home, fatty. You know, if you got a car, that's one thing. But they go, hey, they just want to get you out there, get you on that stage, and get some drinks in you, and then they're done with you. And I'm like, how am I getting back to the state I just came from? Hey, that's up to you. Figure it out, dickless. So right. here's the clinker. We do first show. It was amazing. It sold out. Second show, we probably had like eight people there. And we shouldn't have added it. They hated us. We all bombed. Me and Mackie and a couple other guys Artie Fuqua was on the show, and uh, I'm like, I guess I got to get the train back, and is it still running? I don't know. Can someone give me a ride to the station? Maybe I'll Uber to the station. It's like 1 in the morning at this point. So Mackie, being the sink that he is, goes, you know what? I like hanging out. I'll drive you. So he drove me and another comedian back, which was a huge gift. I mean... You know what it's like to be straight. I don't even know what town I'm in. It's like Henderson or Dixburg or whatever it is. And you're like, I don't know where I am. I don't know what train to get on. What am I doing? He brought us back. It was like an hour drive. We get back. The guy in the front, I'm not going to say his name. He gets out. We drop him off first. So then I go in the front seat talking to Mackie. We're bullshitting. And I go, "Uh uh-oh, his phone. The guy left his phone in the car. So Mackie's like, shit. I don't know what what apartment he is. Like, I, I just dropped him off on 44th Street. I don't know what building he went into. He just got out. And I was like, fuck. We can't call him. Can't email him. So he's like, I'm going to bring you home, and then I'll go back up and try to find it. And I was like, all right. <laughs> so then he's bringing me home. I get out. Now here's the clinker. It's 2 in the morning. It's on a Wednesday in New York City during a pandemic. No one on the street. A tumbleweed goes by, and it's like that Chappelle joke. A crackhead climbs up a tree. You know, there's a prostitute with a dick. And right when I get out of the car, he drops me off a block away from my apartment. One guy goes, yo, 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 man, yo, man. I'm like, I'm good, I'm good. Just a homeless guy. He starts chasing me. So I start running. Then another guy sees me, and he's like, yo, yo, my man, let me get some change. And he starts, now I got two hobos chasing me. So then I'm running, and I go to my keys. I realize, forgot my headphones in Mackie's car. Go! Oh, my God. What kind of car is this? It's like a black hole. This is horrible. I know. It's one of these low seat, low riders. You, you get in, all your shit falls out of your pocket. It's like a bully. Turns you upside down, the chains falls out. So I need these headphones. You know me. I got a bit about it. I can't live without a headphone. So I call Mackie, and I go, Mackie, you got to turn around and give me my headphones. I'm so sorry. Now he's got my headphones. He's got the other guy's phone. So I go, I'll meet you on McDougal Street. I'll meet you in front of the cellar. I go to the McDougal Street. It's just ray, ray, well, what's the word? Rabid. Rabid with hobos. They're like cockroaches. Oh, boy. I'm sure I'll get shit for that. But uh, they're all out and about, and 
luckily a cop is like uh, patrolling the area, going by every couple minutes. So they like they swarm towards me, and then the cop goes by and they back off. So I'm like, where the hell's Mackie? Where the hell's Mackie? Finally, I notice that there's two garbage cans blocking McDougal Street. I guess they don't want cars going up and down it for some reason in a pandemic. I don't know. So I turn my back for one second. Mackie pulls up. I turn around. He's moving. He got out of the car. And he's moving the garbage cans. I guess, what? and I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't move them. So I run over to Mackie, and this guy in a garbage truck goes, "What the hell are you doing? Don't move those. We put those there." And it was a whole thing, and I got the headphones, and Mackie got out of there. But uh, stressful night. Got home at like two fifteen, and gotta start saying no. Oh my god! First of all, how I'm proud of Mackie. How bold to get out and move a trash can. I, you could throw. Uh, 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 like an egg carton in a street, I'd be like, turn around, we got to go a different way, there's something going on here. I I have no ability to be like, well, we better, I could just move it. I've always been blown away by those guys, and Mackie doesn't strike me as one of those guys. So maybe he's seeing some kind of therapy or some kind of something. He's he's in recovery, I think, because that is bold to get out and just move a garbage can. Well, he's such a good friend, and he was like, oh, a bunch of scamps or or tiddlywinks or 'er ne'er-do-wells put these... uh, these garbage cans in the street to, to fuck with the adults. So he was like, oh, these kids again. So he got out and moved them, thinking it was the right thing to do, and he was just trying to get to the cellar because he knew I was there. And uh, so he was just trying to be a good friend, but then he got yelled at by a bunch of garbage men. Well, he's a good man. He's first class all the way, that Joe First Mackey. class. And went uh, up, one of the best comedians ever. Oh, so funny. Kill had set of the night, went up to 44, just walked up and down 44 till he found the building, gave it to him, did it, and went home. Wow, good man. You got to be careful of those garbage guys because at least they used to be. I don't know what happens now, but they were mob guys back in the day. Oh, yeah. Not, these guys didn't seem very mobby. Maybe mob deep. Ah, uh, yes. clear. Um, <laughs> I had an incident the other day. I mean, this isn't much of a story, but I was walking in a story here, and there was a guy in like a Cadillac, and he was driving on the sidewalk, like fully on the sidewalk. Two really? guys. Yeah, but there's like a car, um, what do you call it, mechanic or something uh-huh. on that block. So there was kind of cars. You know, uh. once in a while there's like a business where there's like cars parked on the sidewalk because there's a mechanic. And he must have, maybe he just got his car fixed and it was blocked. I don't know. But we were walking and he was driving up the sidewalk. And of course, my instinct is always to be like, look at this fucking piece of shit driving on the sidewalk. And I kind of made a face. And as I looked over, I made eye contact and he had a big, scary look. And I thought, like, wow, what if I was one of those guys that was like, hey, what is this? You're on the sidewalk, you fuck, trying to be whatever. Yeah. And the guy is, you know, uh, Tony Baloney, the fucking mob boss, and he just makes an example out of me and beats me to death. So it, it was a split second. But yeah. But I didn't have that moment of being like, hey, get out of here, you fucking douche. And then he's like, I'll show you. And he's his name is Billy Knuckles or whatever, and he beats right. me to death. Yeah, you never know. I always see people interact with other people. I'm like, how did that guy not get beat up all the time? I've thought that for years about comics. Certain comics in the city would just have these snap sets. And I'm like, do you know how to fight? What are you doing? Like, that guy, right. that's a real person. He could just fucking beat the shit out of you. Yeah, even like somebody, I'll, I'll see a guy shoulder check another guy. And the guy's like, watch where you're going. And the other guy's like, oh, sorry. I'm like, you do that to the wrong guy and he'll knock the fuck out of you. Yeah, it's a it's a scary world. That's why I don't leave my house except uh, during the day to buy old books. Yeah, <laughs> get some old books, some some uh, vapor rub, whatever you got to do. So speaking of hobos, we had another one of the we had another grifter attempt. Oh boy! So I don't know. You know, it's getting wild out here in Manhattan. But I don't know if you remember a couple months back when the pandemic was just getting bubbling up. <laughs> this guy bumped into the lady. With a yeah. fucking sandwich and yes. dropped it and pulled the whole, oh, that was a $48 hoagie, you cunt. What are you doing to me? Uh, she was like, ah, oh, okay, here's 50. Keep the change, sir. So that was that pissed me off. That was like a few months ago. We're walking down the street last week. Lady walks by, leftovers, bumps into the gal. Whoa, leftovers go flying. It's a bunch of rice and chicken and salad. And I was like, oh, my God, what's going on here? And she goes, oh, my God, honey, I'm so sorry. Honey, I'm so sorry. She kept calling her honey. And then, you know, my gal's like, oh, my God, are you okay? Did I, Was that my fault? I'm so sorry. Oh, can we help you? And she goes, we look at the leftovers. It's ruined. It's all dirty. It's filthy. The chicken bones got, you know, horse shit and pigeon feathers on it. 
And she goes, oh, it's one of these gals. It's one of these grifters. And I go, keep it moving. Keep it moving. And the lady's like, honey, honey, can I just ask you for a favor? I, I, I was so hungry. Oh, my God. This is all my only lunch. Ah. And we see all these <laughs> scars on her face and shit. And she's a, clearly like a druggy, methy kind of gal. And we just like, no, thank you. We can't. And she follows us. We're like, we're good. We're good. We know the move. We know the grift. We're not idiots. A couple, go go trick a couple other hayseeds. And she eventually left. But uh, it wasn't pretty. Yeah, I guess that's the best move is uh, I'm familiar. I, I got it. Yes. Which is, you know, that's like the worst thing you could do. I, I'm uh, equating grifters and comedians because it feels like we have a lot in common. But if you're doing a bit and someone's like, ah, yep, yep. I know right. where it's going. I got it. Right. Got, got it. I mean, got what it. could be more brutal than that? So I think a grifter, they might not have the feelings that comedians have. I don't know how it works, but I do feel like saying, ah, someone hit us with this already. Somebody already yes. did the sandwich thing. That might disarm them. And I would actually appreciate it if they were like, ah, shit. All right. Let me just grab my food. Sorry. Take care. Totally. Totally. But she, you could tell that I guess my gal has this a real... M- no pun intended, but she looks like a mark. She looks like a fucking gotcha. This this chick, we can we can pull the wool over her twat in two seconds. Yeah, I feel like I have that look too because I got I'm like hey, right. you know, I think I have the hey hey look. But uh, and I I've been a mark in the past. I don't know if I uh, told this story before, Ooh. but years ago, twenty twenty five years ago. I was dating, I think I told this story before, but I was dating my high school girlfriend and I was like, I know how to get Red Sox tickets. I know, uh, I, I get them off a scalper and the scalper, he could tell I was like 17 or 18 and oh, I'm just realizing I definitely told the story, but he was like, I'll get you in the park. I, I can get you tickets. He's like, what are you looking for? And I was like, I don't want anything special. We just want to get in the, in the ballpark, which is something I had heard someone say before. I was like, we just want to get in there. And he just took us, he took my money. He's like, give me uh, 80 bucks or whatever. I gave him 80 bucks, and he just went to the box office, and he bought tickets that were available. It wasn't sold out. This was like 98 or something, and he just got us two tickets, and they were like half face value, and then my girlfriend was like, oh, you just got fucked, and oh. I had to be like, no, 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 this is good. This is nah. good. We did it, <laughs> and uh, it's the worst, worst feeling in the world. I think that was a repeat. I'm going to kill myself. I suck. I'll eat my own shit, but I had a anyways, similar thing. The point is... We've all been grifted at some point or, a, yes. or another. It stings, man. You feel like such a rube. You're like, ah, oh, I'm the dweeb in the movie. They, they got me with the three-card money. I fell for it. I got, I got rooked. Well, then what happens, though, is it makes you uh, rough. That way now, anytime someone's like, hey, would you like to support a child in Africa? I'm like, fuck the child. I hate children. I hate Africa. Yes. And, and there's people like, hey, my, my dad has cancer. Could you? I, I hope he dies soon. I don't want to be grifted. I bought Red Sox tickets that were too expensive. Fuck Yes, off. fuck your dad. Fuck the kid with the distended belly and the flies up his ass. You're not getting me again. Right. Hey, everybody. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Feels CBD. I love Feels. This stuff is great. They sent it to us. You know how much we like it. I throw it in my tea at night. You can put it under your tongue. Whatever you do, it just makes your eyes a little heavy. It takes the uh, the edge off, as they say. It's really good stuff. It's not a drug. It's uh, it's it's healthy. It's good for you, I believe. And uh, I really I really like it. I love this stuff. What is feels? It's a premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. It naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. It really does uh, work. I love it. It's not, you don't feel wiped out or knocked out. You just feel like, hey, I'm going to sleep a little bit. It's nice. And uh, you can get real support from them, too. If you're new to CBD, Feels offers you free CBD hotline and text message support to help guide your personal experience. It works naturally to help you feel better. There's no high, hangover, or addiction. Mark, I know you love it. Tell them how to get it. Love, Feels, can't sleep without it. Big fan. It's the best in the biz. Become a member. Get on the community. Feels has me feeling my best every day. Can help you, too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash Tuesdays, and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. Damn, half off and free shipping. That's uh, F-E-A-L-S dot com slash Tuesdays to become a member and get 50% off automatically on your first order with free shipping. One more time, feels.com slash Tuesdays and feel better. 
That's right, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Raycon. We all know how frustrating it is to lose earbuds, AirPods, whatever you lose to listen to your stuff. We know how much we're all watching stuff these days. Netflix, Amazon Prime, Criterion Channel. I got it all. I'm never not watching something. And I need the best uh, wireless earbuds around. And so I always reach for Raycon. Unplugging is easy with Raycon. I love these earbuds. They're awesome. There's no dangling wires. I like to rock out, jump around, air guitar. There's nothing to rip out because there are no wires. That's why I love Raycons. It comes in a range of stylish colors, always with a comfortable in-ear fit for a more discreet look. Raycons are built to perform anywhere and anytime with water and sweat-resistant construction and Bluetooth that pairs quickly and seamlessly. You know how annoying it is to try to pair something and it just Uh. won't pair? Hate you a know, pear. Hate an apple. It stinks. I, I don't like fruit, but uh, get yourself some Raycons. Mark, tell them how to get some Raycons. Got to get the Raycon, folks. They're offering 15% off all their products for our listeners, and here's what you got to do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. That's B-U-Y, Raycon. That's it. You'll get 15% off. Your entire Raycon order, so feel free to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. One more time, B-U-Y, raycon.com slash Tuesdays, folks, and get your pair today. Um, we, I had this happen the other day. This is like kind of the opposite in a way. Maybe, it was a, maybe it's similar, but... I was out in the city. This is uh, yesterday, actually. Yesterday? God, I can't even remember. Yes, it was yesterday. Beautiful day here in New York. It was 65 degrees, sunny. I was walking through Central Park, and I was uptown, and I saw a lady. I was feeling good. I was feeling grateful, feeling happy, feeling feeling the love, and there was a lady just sitting there looking all... She was on drugs or something, sitting outside a bodega, and she said, "I I need help." And I said, "I got a few bucks. I'm doing well. I just got uh, I got the goods." So I said, "Hey, here's a here's a buck." And I gave her a dollar. And then there was a lady next to her that ah. popped out, and she had like a, a bandana and a thing. She looked like she was doing better. She didn't look all fucked up, but she said, "Hey, I I need help too." And I said, "Ah, eh, what the hell?" I went in my pocket. I thought I had another dollar, but all I had was fives. So I said. Ah, fuck it. I just gave her a five. She said, I want some chicken. And then she did say, she did go directly into the chicken place, which made Ah. me feel good. So maybe she was getting chicken. But then I felt bad because I gave her five, but the really fucked up lady, I only gave one, which is five times. So I said, well, I don't want to be an asshole. So I gave her a five. So that lady has six. Uh Aha. Then I walk about 15 feet and there's a guy (laughs) and he's been watching the whole thing. He's just standing there. And he looks all fucked up. His, sho- his shoes are missing the toes, like cast away, and he's got a hole in his pants, and it's like the drawstring is tying it together, that thing. And so uh. he said, hey, hey, brother. And I didn't even let him say anything. I just pulled out another five. I gave it to him. I'm handing out fives like fucking Daddy Warbucks. This is like a math problem. You're doing like a, this is like a, a SAT question. Uh, so if you give one hobo a dollar and then five to the next and then another five to the original, then the fucked up meth head guy gets five. How much money are you out? Well, it was 16 I was out, but I felt good. I mean, it lasted about 10 minutes. I said, hey, I, I feel great. I'm giving out money. What's 15 bucks, 16 bucks? I spent 900 on a Lyndon Johnson bullshit that I'll never read and a, a fake fig- signature. But so ah. I gave out 16 bucks. So I feel like that buys me. And one guy, one guy out of the 70,000 listening was upset about my Ecuador story. So put that in your pipe and blow me, which is a saying I'm trying to get started. I but like it. I, I handed out 16 bucks to three people, and one of them wasn't even a hobo, I think. It was just a lady that wanted to buy chicken ah. uh, and saw me as a, as a mark. Uh, but anywho, so I, I feel good. I'm going to let that carry me for about six months. Well, that'll put you probably up over the of the grand you try to spend. Now you're out. You're down a large because you, you bought seven books uh, and you, you housed four fucking hobos. I was really upset that they, did, they didn't yes and me. I was like, come on, we'll send $1,000. No one seemed pumped about it they just went ah, all right and it, it, i it, felt alone it i mean it's a cool thing to do and it's exciting but it does feel a little bit like are we out of ideas we can't go get ice cream we got to try to spend a cool grand here well ice cream would have helped it would have contributed we had magnolia books jeans sunglasses we got up to about seven hundo i think between the three of us 
man, that's every woman's dream too. The husband going, hey, let's 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 spend a hot grand today. What do you think? Everyone, I'll get shoes. I'll get a nude ro- watch and a diamond and a you know a, a fucking purse. I gotta say, this is the most lady voice you've ever done in an episode. This is a new oh, record. Yeah. A lot of lady voice. Sorry, I'm hungover, but <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Okay, I'll bring back. Maybe I'll do the lady more. One was Mackie, to be fair. <laughs> I've never done lady voice in comedy. I've always had to just talk with regular voice, but some people can pull it off. Bill Burr does it. Kevin yeah. Knox was like the greatest. I think Burr got his voice from Knox. Oh, really? But I just never could do it. But I, I feel like, do you do it on stage ever? No, no. I feel like it's kind of mean. I don't do the gay voice either. Like, hello. I well, don't do that either on the, on the uh, stage. That's like illegal now. I don't think uh. you can. I think they lock you up for that. Well, I don't know if I told you, but back in the old cellar days when I was doing it seven times a night, I had there was a gay waiter at the cellar, and he pulled me aside one day and was like, hey, I just want to sh- tell you that I appreciate that you don't do the gay voice. You have a lot of gay jokes, but you don't do the gay voice, and that means a lot to me. And then we fucked. But <laughs> oh, wow. either way, I, I remember taking that in and being like, oh, God, I'm so glad I didn't do the, the homo voice. Wow. Gay waiter, gator. Florida ah, gators. Florida. That would be fun if the Florida Gators became like instead of the alligator, they just it was like a guy and you know yeah. with like pigtails and he's got a tray of food. <laughs> he's, a, he's a gay waiter. He's a gay That's waiter, a yeah. Shot. Gator yeah, boots. I'm, I'm gonna uh, kill myself. So uh, I got I got to throw this one in your uh, pee hole and see if it burns. Just did a Cincinnati funny bone. Okay. Liberty, they call it. It's one of these towns. It's like actually out. It's basically Whitman. It's the Whitman to Massachusetts to Boston, Cincinnati to Liberty. Right. Yeah, I kind of remember that one. It's way out. It's it's one of these things where you, the flight is two hours, then you land, and the guy's like, "All right, we'll head over to Liberty. It's going to be about an hour." You're like, "Oh, brutal." It's half the Anytime flight. Anytime I'm in a car with somebody, they can be the nicest person in the world. I'm like, "What is it? Like five minutes away?" And they're like, 40, and you're like, "Fuck me." I know. It's just enough time to be cunty. You know, if it yeah. was 31, all right, all right, but 40 pushes it over a hump. It's brutal. So go out to Liberty. It's one of these fake towns. It's All these towns look the same. It's like Chipotle, uh, Sephora, Apple Store, uh, Uncle Lou. What's that? Louie's, that Bar Louie's? Bar, bar Louie. Bar Jason's Louis. Deli. That's a yes. big one. Yes, yes. That's a big one, yeah. So they're all out there, and it's all a bunch of shit you'll never buy. There's a Hagen dazs and all this. It's all high end bullshit. And uh, so great, great weekend. Fat Chris Al's featuring. We hang out. We have lunch. We go gay. The whole thing. Uh, but one night it's the manager's birthday, and he goes, "We're all going out to the bar over here. It's the whole staff, the cooks, the waiters, oh, the the management. We're all getting together." And, and you know, you get that that. And twenty-two year old in you goes, Woo, let's do it. Let's let's do some blow and get a hooker and fuck a donkey. Let's go all in. So we go to the bar, it's packed, the music's blaring, you can't hear shit, everybody's smoking cigarettes, everybody's fat, it's Ohio. And you get two seconds in, you go, What the hell are we doing here? This sucks. I can't even talk to you. There's nowhere to sit. Everybody's sweaty, playing pool. You know, you you walk this way, you bump into a pool stick, you walk that way, you bump into a fat chick. So you're like, ah, what are we doing? So I go, How about this? Let's go to the hotel, my hotel. There's a big conference room. Let's buy a bunch of beer and just sit in the conference room and hang out. Wow, and they I all like go, it. sure, that's cool. So we tell one of the, the, the managers, like, hey, we're going to head out. This is too loud. We want to talk. But we're going to go buy some beer. Where should I go? And he goes, it's all wrapped up. It's Ohio. It's a pandemic. Everything's closed. So we go, ah, we want some booze. So he goes, hang on. He leaves. We go to the hotel. He shows up with like two cases of beer and a couple of bottles of tequila and some lime. So we're like, ah, it was like the old days. Wow. Not, where did he go? Does he own them? He went to the club and stole it. Oh, class boy. I wasn't following. I'm stupid. No, it's I thought right. he had him at his, at his house. Yeah, that's the bet. Nothing better than somebody that has the booze in. I remember my friend Donnie Cedar used to work at, uh, I shouldn't. I should bleep his name in case he's nah. a statue of limitations. But he worked at a liquor Donnie. store, and I mean, he would hook us up. It was insane. He'd have like a a cardboard box full of boot, like whatever he could get his hands on, shamboard, fucking whiskey, vodka, everything. It was the best. There's nothing better than the hookup guy. Yes. And I feel like I've never been the hookup guy my whole nah. life. I've always wanted to show up with, you know, 
coke and heroin and uh, a couple of Asian kids. I, I just would love to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. It'd be nice to be the hookup guy where you show up one time. This party I was at ran out of beer, so me and a couple guys left, stole a keg from some other backyard. We had clocked like a, a couple days before, and it had half a keg in it. We stole it, brought it to the party. We were heroes. That's a great feeling. Yeah. I'd like Everybody to have went it nuts, even though the beer tasted like, you know, elf cum. But it was, uh, it was fine. And so last thing I'll say about Cincinnati, you know, fine town, whatever. <clears throat> Saturday night, we do two shows, <coughs> and there's a big UFC match. And this is how, this is how nice this club is. Not only, <laughs> sorry, a little semen. COVID. Not only did they, uh, did they hook us up with this free booze on Friday night, Saturday night, big UFC fight. I'm happy to be talking to the manager about it. He goes, you know what? We'll put it on the big screen. And I go, what? Because you know, it's pay-per-view. It's $8 million. It's a special event. And I go, oh, my God. So the whole show let out. We saw everybody, did the shows. It was fun. The whole show lets out, and then he puts the big projector down. It's me and, like, five, six guys in the showroom just watching UFC with a beer, feet up, in the showroom of the comedy club. It was magical. That's a great feeling. Don't you feel like you thrive in those situations? Is there anything better than when you're in a a, a group setting and you just know you're going to have some good lines? Yeah. (laughs) You're like, something happens, and you're like, bye-bye. You get to be the cut-up. It's like you get to snipe the the event. It's such a fun feeling, especially when you're with, you know, loser non-comics like Chris Allen and uh, the staff, you know. (laughs) Totally, totally, yeah. And and also, (laughs) you're in your own showroom. Like, you just did an hour of your own jokes on that stage, and now you're sitting on the floor being funny again. It's it's a great feeling. So you really own that room. By the way, I got to say, I already feel horrible. Chris Allen is a fine comedian, a fine man, and uh, uh, terrific, terrific comic, of course. I don't want to... Yeah, he was killing it all weekend. I think he's got a, an album he's recording at the Raleigh Good Nights. So uh, give that a goog. Hit the Raleigh site and check out his album. And go see him, for Christ's sake, and be on some wax. Yeah, fill it up. Be, uh, be that guy that everyone can hear the laugh. Uh, I'm excited for that. It's about time. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to retire a few of those uh, jokes. But yeah, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Good for him for doing stuff and putting things out and and progressing and going gay. But uh, yeah, just so fun. And it was one of those things, too, where my flight was at 7 a.m., which means you got to be there at 6, but the fucking airport's an hour away, so you really got to get up at 5. And uh, the fight didn't end till 2. Then you go back home, you rub one out to your photo album, and then it's 3.30, and then you fall asleep, you wake up at 5, you want to kill yourself. Yeah, that's. I'm not looking forward to any of that. Uh, that Nightmare. The, the the car ride and the traffic and the that pressure to go hang out with people. Right, and, right. And morning radio. I'm going to Tampa this week. Uh, tomorrow I got to do radio on Thursday. I haven't had that feeling in so long. Calta. Uh, I assume Calta. Calta will be nice. I like doing Calta. He's a good man, a good person. He's a funny yeah. guy. Good egg. Um, great egg. Great big egg. <laughs> A huge, massive egg. Big um, egg, scrambled. But uh, I'm looking forward to that, but I'm, I can't wait for the... But it also, at the same time, is it has been long enough that I'm like, I can't wait to get back to work. I do right. miss the road. I miss the feature, l- having lunch with the feature. Yes. And um, I, I'm pretty excited about that. In Tampa, I'm staying in a, a nice hotel with the ocean, and Ooh. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to be doing some swimming and some shows. And um, yeah, I do, I do, I do miss that part of it, particularly Tampa, because the crowds are so fucking nice there. Crowds are great. This, that that air in Tampa feels good. It's like a good misty kind of ocean air there in Florida. And I don't know something about Tampa when the sun is setting. Uh, I, I really get all misty and and queefy. I feel the same exact way. It's this weird thing. It, it's it's very sunny there, and then the sun sets for like a while there, and there's like yes. that breeze, and you just yes. do it. And you have that 6 p.m. show. It's like that nice lighting. Ooh. Plus, there's a Chipotle directly across yeah. the street. Don't be afraid to throw those gift cards around. Starbucks is there. Yes. Then there's a chicken place right next door that I really like, too. I ah. forget the name of it. But uh, I'm excited. There'll be some special guests there for my weekend, I might Ooh. add. Ooh-wee. You don't so, want to miss that. But get your get your tickets to that. There's something the the worst part about the road are the little steps. You know I hate steps. Twelve steps, your first steps, stepdad, whatever it is. I hate a step. I'm talking about, okay, I'm flying to Tampa. On paper, that sounds fine. Flying to Tampa. But it's actually 
wake up early, get an Uber, get in the Uber, get to the airport, go through security, find your gate, board your flight, be pissed off at the fat guy next to you, then land, then get an Uber to the hotel, then check into the hotel, then unpack your bag. It's like, God damn these steps. I want to kill myself. Too many steps. I, I realize I just have to accept this. I can't fly without getting a headache at some point because it's it's that fucking er, you're, you're waking up early you're never waking up when you want to wake no, up never you're never sleeping properly because you're like is it three huh is it four right, huh? right. God, you keep doing that thing and then i it's you know what it is it's a series of possible problems you wake up and you're like is my alarm gonna go off the alarm right, goes up right. am i you know am i gonna get my boner to go down is the uber going to show up on time is right. there going to be too much traffic is the security line going to be too long is it going to be is the flight going to be delayed is the fucking right. cab the line for cabs and by the way sarah and i got back from uh houston this week at LaGuardia, which they haven't finished in the fucking one year long pandemic <laughs> they couldn't wrap that up no and they stink. you go to the cab line there's a long there's a yellow cab line and say, oh, there's only two people we were in first class didn't check bags so we just walk off get in line the cab but what we don't realize now there's not 500 cabs sitting there like the old days because there's not as many people flying so it. the lady there's a dispatcher has to call the cab she's ah. like in the little booth and we sit there we just watch uber after uber go and it's like freezing cold i didn't have a coat because i went to texas so i didn't pack a coat and we're sitting there freezing and there's no cabs and we're at terminal c and terminal d is like back that way yeah so all the cabs are picking up all the terminal dildos and they're not picking up the terminal cunt because the dildos are getting the rides and we're watching people go by in cabs it was like 35 minutes new york is a uh, fucking nightmare it's a nightmare and terminal dildo is a great action movie with bruce willis but yeah that is a that's a bitch you know what else is a real coos in my cooter is the the city you land in and they go Okay, the Uber pickup is in the parking garage on the other side of the earth, and you got to go to floor B and wait in the parking garage. You're like, what? I'm here. What can't just pick up? I'm on a sidewalk. Go, no, it's a specific pickup place for the Uber in a garage a mile away. Oh, it drives me crazy. We have to uh, go back and deal with all this shit. By the way, Terminal Dildo. Somebody make that movie poster, for God's sakes. Yes. Terminal Dildo, Terminal Cunt, and... Uh, That's the sequel. That's it, yeah, terminal anal, terminal. Do you know that, uh, what do you call it, that alphabet? Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, that's as far as I can get. What's it called? Are there more? I've never heard it go past Echo, I don't think. They do the whole alphabet. I think F is... Fiddler? Yeah, f uh, farts and G. I, I don't know, they do the whole alphabet. I forget what it's called, though. What's it called? Uh the kooky alphabet, uh, Latin, the Roman, army alphabet, alpha, uh, uh, Greek. I don't think it's Greek. I think they Roman have... wrestling. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh well, it doesn't it matter. But uh, I'm impressed that I got to Echo. That was yeah, like, Echo. I, didn't know I had it in me. Echo. Yeah, that's good. Hey, hey, folks. Today, ah, shit. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays with stories is brought to you by Express VPN. We've all been in lockdown for almost a year. Jeez, Louise. And I think I've seen everything on Netflix by now. But with ExpressVPN, you can trick the computer into thinking you are a different country. That's exciting. And you'll be able to watch just about anything in the whole gosh darn world. You already know a VPN will protect your privacy online, but can also take your TV watching game to the next level, folks. Unlock movie and TV shows that are only available in other countries. It works with any service in over 100 countries, Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, BBC, you name it, folks. I mean, how many times have people said to you, hey, I'm trying to watch your thing, but I'm in Canada, or they don't play it in Australia, or in England, I can't get uh, Pornhub to work, or whatever it is. Now, you're clean, free, and clear of all that. No blocks, no walls up. Anything you want to watch, it's all there, and tell them how, fatty. Yes, sir. It's easy to use, easy as pie, even for a guy like me. Just push one button to change your location. Seamless. Use my special link. I'm going to say our special link Thank right you. now. ExpressVPN.com slash Tuesdays, and you can get an extra three months for free. Support the show. Watch what you want and protect your privacy at ExpressVPN.com slash Tuesdays.
Uh, now I got one more little nugget to dip into your your wing sauce here. Okay, I got something. Okay, all right, I'll 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 be quick here. So no, take your time. I'm on a tear of just fucking my shit up there, fatty. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I forgot my headphones yesterday. That was devastating. I have to sit in the Uber. I'm reaching for my headphones, and I'm like, they're gone. You're going to go the whole weekend without your headphones, and you have to just sit with that and deal with that. And it's just this shame and embarrassment and sadness washes over me, and you start thinking, well, what if I drive back? What if I get the lady to bring them over? What the hell is oh, yeah, what, what, uh, Do I buy some? Do I steal them at the airport? Whatever it is. So forgot the headphones. You deal with it. I went and bought some new ones. Big deal. Whatever. It's my fault. But two nights ago, I go out and do some shows in Brooklyn. I come back. I see the lady outside of our apartment, and I go, hey, what's going on? She goes, I just texted you. I forgot my keys. And I go, ah, you fucking dumb broad, classic hole over here for getting her stuff. I reach for my keys. I forgot mine as well. Oh, my God. What are the odds? We both forgot our keys. God, that's horrible. What did you do? So it was about 10.50 at night, so I said, well, maybe I'll text the super, but... Cut to a week before, I'm in the laundry room with my super, and he's a nice guy where we're actually pretty chummy, and he was like, man, I got to tell you, I got no sleep last night. I was like folding my unmentionables, like, uh uh-huh, you know, under the chin, I got panties and bra, and I'm like, oh, yeah, and he's like, yeah, one of the guys in the building left his keys in his apartment, so he texts me at fucking 11 p.m., and was like, can I get the keys? And I'm like, look, I got a kid, man. I get it. I'm the super, but this is not my job is to let you guys in when you get drunk and forget your keys. And uh, so he's telling me this. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, that's reasonable. And then I cut to a week later. I forget my uh, keys and I'm texting him. Oh, but he likes you at least. So sometimes it is the person. You know what I mean? Like if, True. If some guy I hate, some club owner that ripped me off, fucks me in the ass, I'm going to say, hey, I don't really like dicks in my ass too much, you fuck. But if you fuck me in the ass, I'm saying, hey, Come on my back in between the shoulder blades and let's have uh, let's have some cupcakes after. All right. Wow, that that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. That means a lot and I'll take it. Now I get that shirt off, but I still felt bad, but the lady's like, You gotta do it. What are we gonna sit out here all night? Should we get a hotel? I'm like, all right, all right. So I text, no answer. But now it's a double whammy because I texted and didn't get an answer, so I didn't get in and I pissed him off. But to each his anal. So now I just start hitting buttons. We get in, and I should mention I went and bought a couple of beers before this. I was like, I want to have a few beers before bed. So now I got a you know a couple of beers in my hand, and we get in, and we see this lady coming out, and she's a, she's a member of the board. Oh boy, the building board. These people are no joke. They're not fucking around. They they've been living there since the the fucking uh, LBJ years. Hate a so, board, just in general. Boards are terrible. Stiff as a board, uh, I'm, I'm bored out of my mind. The whole thing stinks. So she comes down, and she's in a huff. I think she got into a fight with her her, her man-child or her lesbian partner, whatever it is. So I was like, oh, hey, uh, I, I, I forgot my keys. And she was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And she's like, but you got in. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm at the key to my, uh, you know, the other key. And she was like, okay. And she looked at the beer and was like, oh, boy. Who's mm. this guy? What's this? What's this all about? And she just ran out. Oh my God! I what kind of bored a, lady is this? She had something going on. She's uh, she, she, I don't know. She's a boardroom. Something was going on. She had a thing to go. I could tell she was in a hurry. That's a, that's a bad board. I mean, fuck that board. Chairman of the board. So billboard. Now it's it's that weird thing where you don't have your key and you're like, well, let's just go up to the door and look at it. You know, because your keys are on the other side of the door, but you just have that, like, well, let's just go up there and maybe something will happen. So knock on the neighbor's door. He's also part of the board, but he's a nice, normal guy. He's like my age. And he's like, oh, they just changed the keys. Let me go down and look. I have some keys in storage. Hold on. So he does all this stuff, and now his dog's out in the hallway, and his wife's in, like, a nightie with a candle and a hat going, what's going on out here? I'm like, it's 11. (laughs) Shut up. So she chats with us. And then eventually we just suck it up and we go, we got to get a locksmith. Oh. I know. No hotel. You didn't think, ah, oh, we'll just get a hotel. We'll fuck in the hotel. Hopefully the mirror faces the bed. We'll come on the pillows. And then the, tomorrow we'll call the, uh, what do you call it? The superintendent. That doesn't sound bad. I do love a hotel. I love a jizz on a mirror. But I had a flight in the morning. I had to pack. We got a cat in there. Uh, there's, a whole, there's a whole thing going on. So... I just wanted to get home, you know. I got, I got to 
handful of beers in my in my right pocket here, and I just want to get in there. Just the key, the key is on the other side of the door on a counter. It's so close. It's ah, it's such a tease. I it's, hate that feeling, and your brain keeps trying to solve the problem. It's like when you're looking for food in the house, and there's no food, and you keep thinking, like, maybe, yes. maybe we put food. Do we put food accidentally you know, exactly. uh, b- behind the toilet or anything. You're like, is there a key <laughs> under the mat? You kind of just check. You check to see if the door is unlocked. And yes. then your brain is like, could we reach underneath and get in? Is that possible? You're thinking the fire escape with the window. Yes. You go through everything. Your brain starts going like that. And I even pulled the credit card out like in an 80s movie. And I tried to shimmy the, the lock jam. Even though I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just doing that shit. And... Uh, you start picturing it working. You're picturing that door fly open, but it never does. So eventually we call the locksmith. He's like, I'll be there in 30 minutes. So I go, all right. So we sit in the lobby. We just start pounding those beers, me and the lady. And then he shows up. Now, I'm expecting John Goodman with a butt crack and a beer gut <laughs> and a bald spot. This guy was smoking hot. He had a man bun. He was sexy. He had like a little mustache and his hair pulled back. And he was so gentle with the door and he was so sexy about it. And uh, I, I gave the guy two hundred bucks, and it was it was it was worth it. That's interesting because I, I think I've said it before. The most grateful I ever was in my life is I wanted to hang all these posters and artwork up in my house. But I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a screw gun or a nail gun or a, a level or any of those things. And so I called like a handyman, and I was so glad my wife wasn't home because he was like dreamy. He was like perfectly brown latina with like bright blue eyes Ooh. you know how we love we love black hair blue eyes i assume yes. ladies love brown skin blue eyes sure and as, as he was all like tattoo it was like a deep dreamy eye that looks like yeah. a, there's a filter on it yeah and he was all muscular and his shirt was too small and his belt was like it just wasn't level it was kind of sagging to one side yeah. and and when he lifted his arm his like midriff was exposed and it was all hard and firm and light brown and i mean i, I really wanted to just suck his dick and and use his screwdriver on my own asshole <laughs> and i thought if, flat it, it, either way i mean i like philip sounds like a man sure sure he'll drill you so uh, i was just so glad my wife was there because i wanted to suck his dick to get like i wanted to watch i wanted to be like yeah you you blow him and uh you know i'll i'll hang these pictures yeah he's, he's got he's got the key to my heart this locksmith but yeah same thing he was fun and cool and then when the cat the door opened the cat goes Row! and it like rubbed up against him and he was like petting the cat all gently and everything and the guy was cool as a cucumber and just he was just he was like a what's that guy's name uh, antonio banderas ah uh, yes very good Yes, so we got in and we both jerked off to that guy and went to bed. Wow, that's nice. Well, good, to, good that it uh, it all's well that ends well. And then you see those keys and you, you're like mad at them. You just want to yes. fucking throw them against the wall. You're like, you fucks, it's their fault. So true. And your brain is such a cum guzzler that I just put, I picked up the keys and I just put them in my pocket. Even though I'm in my house, I put my keys in my pocket. Right. That's the um, brain for you. Well, I'm glad you made it in. I got one quick thing. I know we got to wrap up here, and I-, I texted you about this one, but this was just so so fun. And oh boy, I'm gonna leave out details because I don't want it to be you know controversial here. I think I don't want to. I don't want to cause a stir. But uh, I'm in the. You know, we got upgraded to first class. I do a lot of flying. We're flying from Houston to Oh yeah, LaGuardia. And uh, so, you know, you're in first class. You feel better than everybody. It's a nice feeling. You get on first. And and I really do just judge everyone that's sitting back there, these fucking idiots. Oh, and yeah. We're sitting there, and then it's pretty quiet flight, and a gentleman sits directly across from us, and everybody has their own row, unless you're in a pair, which we were. I'm in the aisle. This guy takes the window seat, and... He looks a little, he's scraggly. He just got, you know, dirty sweatpants on and his shirt's got a hole in it and, you know, his, his hair's everywhere. He just looks like a, like a, a scraggle muffin. Isn't and that weird? Your, your brain will fix that, though. Your mind will go, well, he's probably one of these rich guys who doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, it's like he must be in the arts or something. Yes, yes. So he sits over there and immediately... He's watching videos full volume. He must have left his earbuds in fucking Mackie's car because I just hear like, and it's not like he's watching, you know, uh, Bridges of Madison County. It's like, 
ah, you get the fucking <laughs> right. It's like uh. what, like uh, TikTok. It's all changing. <laughs> oh, right. And I'm elbowing Sarah, going, look, look at this fucking idiot. He's just no headphones in first class. You're just blasting. Usually, first class, you don't have people playing videos out loud. Yeah. And we're sitting there, and then I just hear, uh, excuse me, sir, what's your name? And uh, he kind of like <laughs> mumbles it like Costanza. And she's like, yeah, you're 16B. You're not supposed to be up here. And you have that moment of like, aha, I knew no one in first class is watching movies without headphones. Totally. So then he, they kick him out. He goes back to 16B. And I just thought, if you're going to be sneaking into first class, don't you think you'd be conspicuous? What, what, what is this guy, an idiot? Like, is he think that he's going to get away with that? Just, oh, just sit anywhere. It's a pandemic. Or is it his first time flying? Like, oh, I want to sit here. Inconspicuous. Which one's uh, the good one? Inconspicuous means not doing that, right? Yeah. Is conspicuous, inconspicuous even a word? Inconspicuous means uh, low. Keep lay low, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I said conspicuous. So he was conspicuous, which sounds like a, an old philosopher, doesn't it? Conspicuous. Oh yeah, some Asian guy with a weird beard and a ponytail. But anyway, so he was conspicuous. They kick him out. And then he gets replaced by a guy that looks like showered, clean version of him. Like a guy comes in with like a suit jacket, nice pants, and all quaffed up. But they look kind of similar. And yep. this guy sits down, and I'm like, well, that's more like it. It was like a comedy sketch. It was like a movie. It was, it was crazy how over the top this one guy was. He gets kicked out, and then like a new guy comes in, and he's like, hello. <laughs> right. But, well, I... I hate to be a queef, but I think that it's so telling. Like, if you're the guy who's willing to play videos at full volume on a flight, maybe that's the reason why you're not that successful. Could be. Not that, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm not crazy successful. I'm getting upgraded, but uh, I hear what you mean. I, 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 hear, I see what you're saying. I mean, certainly. Sorry, I was playing with a magnet and I dropped it. But. Oh, uh-huh. I got these little magnets that came with my desk, and they're fun to ah, fuck around with. I love a magnet. Fun. Isn't it fun? Yeah. I try to put it on either side of my dick to see if anything happens, but nothing does. Oh, you could straighten it. Um, I got a pretty straight dick. Oh. All my right, balls right, are gay. gay. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anywho, so that was that, was that and uh, I, I don't know. That's how that story ends. I'm gay. No, nah, well, the all's well that anal's well, and... Uh, yeah, sounds like it was a hella good flight. We got a lot of backlash about hella. Helicopter. Yes. Um, so, uh, hell of the ball. Ah, jeez. All right, but hey, you're going to be in Tampa? Yeah, this weekend I'm in Tampa, March 18th through the 20th, Thursday through Sunday. I got a bunch of dates coming up. Oh, I got to tell you, folks, I had to move Kansas City. I, I'm, not, I'm not there April 8th through the 10th anymore. My apologies. I had something come up. But I will be there June 24th through the 26th. Also, I said helium because I got the email. This is what happened. I got an email saying helium offer, and it was two offers in one. So there is no helium in Kansas City. I wanted to amend that. It's, it's Comedy Club of Kansas City. I made a mistake. I'm a bad person. But uh, in June, I'll be in Des Moines. Big Midwest run. Des Moines Funny Bone, June 10th through 12th. Kansas City, 24th through 26th. May... I'm in Austin, May 15th. It's a theater, so for God's sakes, get tickets. That's part of Moon Tower. Comics at Mohegan Sun, finally making up that date, May 20th through the 22nd. Omaha Funny Bone, April 23rd to the 24th. Bridgeport, Connecticut, April 3rd. And um, check out uh, Joe and Ron on Talk Movies. We had a big special guest. Louis C.K. was on the show. He came on. We talked Stanley Kubrick. That was exciting. So go check that out. And I also want to plug Mindful Metal Jacket because I'm getting all these authors and uh cool people there's no comics are out i got all these buddhists and authors on that are really uh smart and wise so check those out and follow me on youtube or whatever you do on youtube subscribe whatever bullshit there you go must be nice having these authors and smart people because uh they're not just zinging and zanging the whole time well and they fill up the conversation which is nice i I can't talk for an hour with anybody that's not you you know what i mean yeah uh, yeah you and i we flow we kiss we fuck you come on my shoulder blades for the second time in this episode but you know i taught any other other person and and it, it speaks to our our friendship our love your brain your cock your asshole because any other person in the world, uh, one-on-one, I'm like 
12 minutes in, I'm dying. I feel like Costanza, like with the notes, make, calling a lady. It's brutal. Yes. So. Same, same. I can't say queef. I got nothing else to say. I have to censor myself. It's it's terrifying. I've said it before in an interview. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'll kill myself. And they're like, why do you want to kill yourself? I'm like, ah, <laughs> something you say. Fuck off. Right, blow your right. dad. And they're like, your dad? You want to blow your dad? That's why you... And I'm like, shut up. I know. Same. I'm like, I'm hungover. I'm gay. They're like, what? You just come out? I'm like, no, I'm just saying I'm gay. Uh, why would you say you're gay? Are you gay? No, maybe you are gay. Maybe I am. Yeah, so it's tough, but these authors, they're good because you say something, they, they they talk for a while, but there's a lot of good stuff on there, so check those out, and uh, I don't know. Yes, That's good it. times. Let the good times uh, jizz and tell your family to go fuck themselves and get on the Patreon, tell a friend, Tuesdays, we love you, you're out in every city, and come out and see us, and we'll hug, and hopefully we get out of this pandemic, get the vaccine, don't go gay yet, and uh, praise Allah. Wait, you didn't say your dates. Where are your dates? Oh, jeez. Good point. Good point. Uh, thank you. I'm in Lexington, Kentucky at Comedy Off-Broadway this weekend. I've never been. I'm excited. Then I'm at the Columbus Funny Bone, one of the best funny bones, if you ask me. Then I'm in Austin at the Paramount Theater. I think it's the same one as you. Wise Guys again. I feel like I'm at Wise Guys every 10 minutes, and I love that city. I love that club. I love those Jews. Tacoma Comedy Club, Magoobie's Joke House, uh, Laugh Boston, Hartford Funny Bone, Spokane, Virginia Beach Funny Bone, and uh, Portland, Oregon in June. So we got a ton of dates. The world is opening. Life is coming back to normal, and it's going to be a hard adjustment, but push through, folks. Hey! Hmm.